This is how I'm carrying the 20 feet steel. It's connected here. When the truck is turning left or right, this piece moves along with it. I made sure that it's not touching the bed. I've pre-cut the wood that matches the length of the railing and I need two pieces here and at the other end. This approach is more accurate rather than figuring out that it should be six inch but it's actually a little bit less. So this will be better. Otherwise the metal will stick from the sides and it will not be very beautiful. I've marked where I want the holes, the future holes to be. Those holes will be connected to the posts. I will punch the center of the hole using this tool. Now that this is done, I'm continuing to the big pieces. For those of you that don't know, this is a drill press. This is how it's going down and up. There is a stopper on the bottom and on the top where I can configure how deep it will go and this will configure how up it will go. This way I don't have to rotate it all the way up and down, it just stays in this position. And also this goes up and down. This is the place where I change the bits and here I can change the speed. I'm using a half inch steel. So this is half, this is steel. So I need between 390 and 560 RPMs, which gives me 390 and 560, one of those three options. I chose this option, so the belt is going here and there. This is this can be removed and adjusted manually, both of them. The cool thing about it is that it has a laser guide and another source of light. The downside is that sometimes it's noisy and rattles. I'm not sure if I'm not using it properly or it's some kind of faulty design. I'm making marks on the steel with this pen. I used the Milwaukee quad edge drill bits and they are slow. I also tried this drill bit, it didn't work well, at least for me. For countersinking, this tool sometimes is fine, sometimes it's nose. Before drilling I'm using a drop of oil. I'm holding it in place with those quick release clamps. I found that stacking the pieces one on top of another saves me some time. I'm using those two clamps to hold everything in place and again a drop of oil at the top. The way I'm using the drill press is not pushing, letting it work by itself. I'm using a little bit of pressure but if I will use a lot of pressure it will get stuck. I'm constantly checking the way the bit is rotating. If it's rotating too slow, then I'm applying too much pressure and I need to release. If too fast, then I'm not using enough pressure. For example, now I'm using too much pressure. So I'm releasing a little bit and then it's rotating quickly. Too fast, using more pressure. Too much pressure, it's stuck. Before welding, I clamp everything and then wiping off the oil and the excess from the cutting with mineral spirits. Since I don't have enough room with this material, the welding surface is very limited, I will just use lines. 
I will not even use the stitching which is go stop go stop I don't have enough room for it again so just lines and that's it I found those 90 degree angle corners at Menards they are approximately seven dollars a piece they are better than the magnetic 90 degree angle because it doesn't work here with this design first of all it's too heavy for this material and it just doesn't fit with my needs this is better for this purpose I'm using a planner to send and provide the same exact height to all the wooden boards No worries, I'm going to fix it. To strengthen the rails, I'm going to use these two pieces of metal, which will be eventually connected to or welded to this piece of uh, steel. And this piece of steel will be connected to the wood. To make the final look more appealing, I went to the store and found that they have three sizes, maybe there are even more sizes, and there are so many designs. And the one that fits in the height is this one. Twenty six twenty RPM. Cutting an angle in a material and trying to connect it to the same diameter piece will result in surprisingly different diameter. The flexibility of adding more material where it's missing in steel is what I like more about when comparing to lumber. Yep, that happened. Very ugly welding, but probably because it's cold, it's not me. And now it's safe. Now it's really, really safe compared to this one. This doesn't move at all. And once, once I'll place the board here, they will be connected. Now to the rest. I'm making sure that the distance here is equal, then I will tighten the screws. Since this side is very wobbly, I'm going to try and fix it by adding two pieces of metal here and there. On the rest I don't really care because this is the only leaning point except people might put their feet here but I'll do it only here I start from the center, then doing the sides, and only then the pieces between them. I'm aligning the metal with the wood so it will be flush, and then clamping it in place. In some places, like this one, the wood cracked. I could have pre-drilled it, probably, maybe I'll do it better next time. From here, I didn't align it properly. But, on the other hand, it's flush here and it can be flush on the other side. 
so some things I could have improved but overall it withstands my full weight it's really strong it's more than 200 pounds I think I can sit on it I will not fall yeah so metal is fun Since it's so big and bulky, it makes the porch look even smaller. So I'm going to cut it in half. Doing it with the drill press is like cheating. It's very easy. This looks better. Less bulky, the porch looks big again. Now I'm ready to secure it in place. I made sure that the steel is leveled with the existing one. Lay down the board just to make sure that everything is flush or matches the existing one and slowly work my way with the remaining pieces time taken around four weeks cost for materials around 1500 Cost for tools and materials around 10 grand. Thanks for watching.